Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Clara Fabry et je vais vous faire une présentation sur la France. So hi everyone, my name is Clara Fabry and I'm going to make a presentation about la France, about France. So let's begin, I'm going to present myself first. So my name is Clara Fabry, as I told you, I am 24 years old. My studies, I did a bachelor's degree in English studies in the University of La Sorbonne. Then I got a master's degree in gender studies. I am planning to get a PhD in gender studies in the next years. I have lived in Paris my whole life. And I am a passionate, one might call me snob, and it's also accurate, of French movies, French music, and French literature. We're going to begin with metropolitan France in the world. So here are two maps of the world, and you can see here France is that little red dot in the middle. And the capital is Paris, of course. Um, here it's a map of Europe, and as you can see, France is really at the east side of Europe. So the main cities that you might know is Paris here in the north. We have Lyon in the middle, Toulouse and Marseille right next to the Mediterranean Sea. We also have one that is famous, which is Brest, which is very Celtic city here in the west, west, west of France, which I absolutely love. So just for fun, the metropolitan France compared to Pennsylvania. So France is actually five times bigger than Pennsylvania, and it's approximately the size of Texas, as you can see here. Just for fun, if we compare the US and the Europe, you can see that we're a very, very tiny continent. So the frontiers and borders of metropolitan France, we're actually the third largest country in Europe. We're connected to five seas and oceans. We have the North Sea, the English Channel, the Iro Sea, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Mediterranean Sea in the south. The borders with all the other countries are natural. It's either oceans or seas, mountains and rivers. And we're surrounded by Spain. And if we go from top to bottom here, we have Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Switzerland and Italy. And never forget, you see that little island at the bottom of the map that is called Corsica? It's also French. So we're going to study now a little bit about the French language in the world. So we're going to see some fun facts because, yes, there is fun facts about French language. We're going to also see where is French spoken around the world and why is it so useful to learn French. So some fun facts. In the world, there is 52 countries that speak French. It is the official language of 29 countries and almost 300 million people speak French in the world. In the US, it's the fourth most spoken language after English, Spanish and Chinese. And it's actually the second most spoken language in four uh, states of the United States. We have Louisiana, Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And actually 1.6 million Americans speak French at home. So here's the uh, map that I really liked. And in dark blue, you have where is French the first language of the country. So of course, we have French right here in the middle. We also have that eastern part of uh, Canada that is called Quebec and you know some other territories for example here in South America we have Guyana but we'll talk more about it later. Then in blue we have the official language so as you can see it's the whole Canada we have a lot of countries in Africa that speak French and then in light blue we have the French as second language so we can see we have also a lot, a lot of African countries we have some in the Middle East and we have the tiny states next to Texas that is Louisiana. And then in green, we have French as one of the spoken languages of the countries. And as you can see, that green dots are everywhere. So the conclusion is that French is actually spoken all around the world. So why is it useful to learn French? I had to chose mm, some reasons, but there's actually so many. So first, for French is a language of diplomacy and internal communication international communication. It is very important language for science and literature. A lot of the vocabulary comes from French. It is the official language of the UN with English. That's why French is a language of diplomacy. Uh, it's also a multi-ethnicities language because it is spoken all around the world in every continent. It is the main language in Europe. It's also a university language. It allows you to do research in a lot of universities around the world because it is the second most widely learned and taught language in the world. It's also very useful for tourism. If you want to go to Seychelles, Antilles, Monaco, Tahiti, you have to speak French. And it is spoken in a lot of African countries if you ever want to go travel uh, through Africa. And finally, it's the language of cuisine and fashion. So now we're going to see a little bit more about the French overseas departments and territories. As you can see on this map, it's everywhere in the world also. So this is France in Europe, as we saw. But we also have France in North America. 
See that map on the left here? Uh, the dark yellow is the top of Maine, right? And here is the northeast part of Canada. See that red cross white here? There is two islands that are French that are called Saint-Pierre and Miquelon. Then we also have France in South America with Guiana, the country in light blue here. Then we have France in the Caribbean Sea. So if you look at the map that I put here, you can see the Caribbeans, and I'm going to underline every territory that are French. I'm going to underline it in red. So first we have Guadalupe right here, and this is what Guadalupe looked like. We also have Martinique right here. And then if I continue, we have Saint Barthélemy that you might call Saint Bart's. That is that third thing I'm underlining right here. It looks like this, the capital is Gustavia. And then the fourth territory is, be careful, it's right here, I'm underlining it, and it's called Saint Martin. So this is France in the Antilles, which is in the Caribbean Sea. So Saint Martin, as you can see, is divided in two. We have the top half that is French and the bottom half that is Dutch. Then we have France in the Pacific Ocean. So right here next to Australia, we have our first territory that is Nouvelle Caledonie that you would call New Caledonia. Up, oh, I'm circling it right here. Then we have French Polynesia, which is actually a lot of islands. It's not just one island. Then we have Wallis and Futuna, that third circle. And finally, the Clipperton Island, which is actually uh, in the left side of Mexico and Guatemala. So as you can see here, it's that white circle. In French, we call it Ile de la Passion, which is actually Passion Island, but the official title is Clipperton Island. And it looks like this, it's basically a big lagoon. And then there is also France in the Indian Ocean. So see, this is a map of Africa. The island on the right is Madagascar. And I'm gonna zoom on it here. And you see there's a lot of islands all around it. So first we have Reunion Island, which is the one I'm underlining right here. We also have Mayotte, which is another territory. And then all of the other islands that are all around Madagascar are actually called Epars Island, Les Îles Epars. And then finally, we, have, we also have some territories that are lost in the Indian Ocean. We can't even see them on a map. So we have Kerguelen Island, which is that red dot. We also have the Crozet Archipel, which is in purple right here underneath Africa. Then we have the St. Paul Island right here. And right above St. Paul Island is, will be the White Cross, which is the island of New Amsterdam. And then the final uh, territory we own is in Antarctica, and it's the Earth Adélie, Adélie, uh, La Terre Adélie. Uh, I've never heard about it. This was the first time I was hearing about it. But you know, yeah, we're everywhere. France is everywhere. So now that you know more about France, we're gonna talk about being French, which trust me, is a lot. So first, French politics. So France is a republic and a democracy. This is our president, he's called Emmanuel Macron, and this is his prime minister right here, and his name is Edouard Philippe. You might have heard about this government because of them. We call it Gilets and you might know them as the Yellow Jackets. In 2018 and 2019, they did a lot of demonstration because they were very unhappy with his government. It became actually so important and violent that a lot of people died and got hurt. So now there's a huge dislike between the government and the French population. So Macron, who was very popular at first, is not so popular right now. So a little bit more about French politics. So l'Assemblée Nationale is uh, where the laws are read and voted, you know? So everything that is purple belong to Macron. So he owns most part of it. Then what is in pink here is our socialism and red would be communism. Then we have the blue part here that is our right and the very dark blue here, which is extreme right. Well, what is funny is that our right is totally your left. So Obama, who for you is left wing, is for us right wing. So about the French population, 11% of the French population is from foreign origin. And one third is actually from North Africa, these green, green countries right here. The rest is divided between the Eastern Europe. So immigrants from Poland, Romania, Croatia, and also from Southern Europe, mainly from Portugal. About the religion, so 60% of the French are actually Catholics. We have 6% Muslims and 1% Jewish people. And then the other part, the 31% that are left are atheists or other religions. And we have also other religion, we have Protestants, which is 1.7%, as you can see here. 
So the French people are united by their culture, their pride of being French, which is very, very strong, if you might not hear it right now with me. Uh, and also their language, and also all of the French people mm, dislike Parisians, but I will talk more about it later. So the French love and are very proud of a very rich culture. The first music, so classical music, we have, for example, Sansons, Debussy, Ravel, Berlioz, which are all great, great, incredible composers. And then we also have painters and sculptors. We have here Monet, we also have Manet, we have the thinker of Rodin, very famous. We have also Cézanne. I could talk about French Impressionism for hours. I love it so much. We'll also have a lot of writers. We have Victor Hugo. Uh, we have Simone de Beauvoir. She invented the term feminism. Thank you, Simone. We also have Molière, very famous playwright. He wrote, for example, Don Juan, Don Giovanni. Then we have Balzac and Zola, very, very famous social writers, which made big families of characters that are very, very impressive. Um, then about the food, oh my god, I could talk about it for hours. We have, of course, omelette. I actually don't like it, but it's okay. We have boeuf bourguignon, we have fromage, the cheese. It's not a joke in French. Every meal has a pla plate like this of cheeses. And if there's no cheese, it's very weird, and you should be very mad at whoever invited you. Then we have, for example, tartatin, which is a reversed um, apple pie. The crust is on the bottom and the apples are on the top. It's very good. And there is so much more, but I cannot talk about everything. So let's move on. We have also the couture, the fashion. We have Dior, Coco Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent, Jean-Paul Gaultier, which, you know, he really likes stripes, likes me, like me. So being a Parisian in France, I talked about it a little bit. So. The stereotypes you do have about French people, it's usually, I'm gonna answer for you, being a snob, moaning, not being very nice, drinking a cafe, eating a croissant, smoking a cigarette, and biking with a striped shirt. They're all true, but about Parisians people. And so that's why the rest of France don't really like us, because we do embody the French stereotype. But actually, the rest of France does not look like that. And that's what we're going to see now, what the rest of France look like, because it's very, very different. It's very diverse. There's 18 different regions, and each region has its own food, architecture, the language, different music and instruments, different landscape. That's why France is very good for tourism, because it has so many different landscapes and monuments. We have a lot of different weather also, and we also have a lot of stereotypes about each other's. So for example, my favorite regions in France are Bretagne and Normandy. So Bretagne is that left part of France right here, and Normandy is the bottom map here. They're very close in landscapes and food, but they are very different. And they actually hate each other because they fight for a very big monument that is called Mount Saint-Michel. The main cities are Rennes, Deauville, Cherbourg, Brest. They have Celtic music with a lot of bagpipes. If you want to hear, you can listen to Nolwenn Leroy. I love her. It's incredible what she does. And the music actually sounds kind of like Irish music because they share that big Celtic background. And this is where you actually um, drink real cidre what you call cider, which is an alcoholic beverage based on apples, made from apples, and it's delicious, and you can only drink it here. So some of the landscape, this is the Mount Saint-Michel that Bretagne and Normandy fight for, this is Saint-Malo, very beautiful city, and this is my favorite place on the whole earth, it's called La Côte Sauvage, which means the wild coast, it's at the bottom of Bretagne, it's incredible, the landscapes are amazing. Then we have the Grand Est, which is at the east part of France. It's very close to Germany and was actually once owned by Germany. The two regions that Germany used to own were called Alsace and Lorraine. The big cities are Stras Strasbourg and Dijon. If you see on that uh, picture on the left, this is very, very typical architecture from, from the east of France. You will only see this over there. Then we have French Polynesia. Oh my God, look at this paradise-like landscapes. When I was telling you, France has every different type of landscapes. So their official language is French, but they actually talk Polynesian. 
Then we have what we call PACA, which means Provence-Alpes-Côte d'Azur. So it's very, very stereotypical of the south of France. It's beautiful. There's huge fields of lavenders. People play pétanque, which is a French ball game. They drink pastis, a very, I don't like it, very strong French liquor. And they have such a strong accent from the south of France that sometimes even I don't understand them. It's really a very, very different um, culture from what Paris, uh, what Paris culture look like or Bretagne culture look like. So France is very, very diverse. Then we have Corsica, that little island that is right above of Sardinia, the Italian island. So they have a lot of beautiful, beautiful seas and beaches and also big mountains. They're very famous for their charcuterie and cheeses that are amazing. And they also have their own flag. They don't share the French flag because they have a political party that is actually advocating for their independence. So maybe one day they won't be part of France anymore. So now we're gonna study what is difference between the US and France. So first, education and degrees. So in France, you go to middle school from 11 years old to 14 years old. Then you go to high school from 15 years old to 18 years old, and you can choose between three different passes. You either study language and literature, which is what I did. Then you can also study science, so chem uh, chemistry and physics, or the third one is economics. Then once you graduate from high school, you can go um, to the university and have a license degree, which is three years, and a master's degree, which is two years, and then a PhD, which is what I'm trying to do in three years. So the university is different than in the US. This is my university, La Sorbonne, and it's 300 euros per year, which is $330. And if you get a scholarship, it's totally free. You have to choose one major that you only study very specifically. So for example, my major was English and I could only study English. English grammar, English pronunciation, English history, English literature. You cannot choose anything else. So I think that's not very good, but that's how we do it. And then the class is 50-50. So 50 is travaux dirigés, which is kind of like a regular class. And then it's cours magistraux. It's in big amphitheaters with hundreds and hundreds of people listening to one teacher. This is an amphitheater from La Sorbonne. And I can swear, when you're in there, you're listening to the teacher. Very impressive. So education, of course, is very different. We also have different healthcare system, as you might know. Uh, in Europe, specifically in France, the healthcare system is free and for everyone. Um, the people and how they behave towards each other. I know it's a stereotype, but it's actually true. In France, we're very cold and not very warm. Whereas, whereas in the US, everybody is so welcoming and interesting in you. It's very refreshing. The food and the time of eating are very different. In France, we eat dinner at 8 p.m. and the restaurants won't be open before 7.30 p.m. The dressing, especially at the U, oh my God, I was so shocked to see people in sleepers and in pajamas. You cannot do that in France. If you ever study or go to France, keep that in mind. Don't show up at the university in your pajamas. You cannot do that. Um, saying hello is very different to, uh, in France, it's very simple, except if it's professionally, of course, but with your friends, you just kiss on one cheek and then on the other cheek. It's la bise, and that's how we say hello. And then the popular sports. In France, soccer is so big. We actually call it football, by the way. When there's a big soccer game, the whole country is shut down. And here it's the US, it's more baseball and the American football. I swear, I tried to understand, but I couldn't. It's just too hard to, for me. I swear I tried. So what I learned about and from the US is a different and more innovative teaching method. In France and basically in Southern Europe, we're very attached to old traditions, reading books, going to the libraries, where in the US it's more about internet and PowerPoints, and it's very, very informative. I've loved it. It's way more easier. I also learned to grade as an American. In France, if you have 70 out of 100, you pop out the champagne, it's incredible. Whereas here, I learned that if it's mm, below 85, the students will actually cry, they're not happy. So I learned how to grade as an American. I was also very surprised, pleasantly surprised at how well organized the universities and the administration can be compared to France. In France, it's such a mess. You really don't want to have anything to do with the French administration, trust me about that. And it's also very refreshing to see how interested 
and involved the students are they actually listen to you and ask questions and are involved in the homework and are ready to make presentation it's very very refreshing so I was very pleasantly surprised about that. So what I love about the US, um, on top of what I just said, you can eat whatever you want. Wow, that's amazing for me. Um, the university offers everything a student can want. So in France, the university is really um, classroom. You, sit, you go there, you sit, you have your class, and then you go home. Whereas in the US, it offers everything, whereas it's music, sports, theater, it's incredible. And they really like help you becoming an adult. And I'm really, I wish I could have lived that. It's incredible. People are often warm and interested about you. For example, this presentation, it would never happen in France. If you're from another country and you go to France, first, people won't talk to you if you don't speak French and they will never ask you to do a presentation about the country. I'm exaggerating, but really it's kind of, um, it's kind of true anyway. And there's a lot less judgment about the physical appearance and clothes, which is really refreshing because it can be a little bit of pressure when you live that every day. So yeah, that is the end. I hope I was not too quick and I made myself understandable and clear. If you have any further questions or if you just want to talk about any French topic, whether it's literature or music, please do. I love talking about it, as you might have heard. It's my favorite topic, so don't hesitate. This is my email address, clarafabri at wanadou.fr. Uh, you can add me on Facebook and you can follow me on Instagram and we can talk about it. And yeah, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate and bye it was happy i was happy to do this presentation for you